Welcome back. In the last video, we discussed community, knowing your fandom, and how to hide easter eggs in your fix. In this video, we'll get into some of the tropes of fanfiction, how to subvert expectations, and end with a thought on crossovers. Let's get into it. Know your tropes. Tropes have taken a bit of a bad rap. When most people think of tropes, they're really thinking of cliches. A trope is nothing more than a figurative or metaphorical use of an idea. A cliché, on the other hand, is an expression of an idea that is overused and lacking an original thought. Or in other words, a cliché is an overused trope. But taken by themselves, there's nothing wrong with tropes. You actually can't even have fiction at all, fanfic or not, without them. Every genre, even down to each individual book, TV show, game, or movie, have tropes. In romantic comedies, we have the meet-cute, where the two would-be lovers meet in some comically unlikely way. In horror movies, the young co-ed who ventures into the woods by herself is guaranteed to die in ways that she did not deserve. Every disaster movie has the obligatory cut-the-rope scene, where an unexpected hero sacrifices himself for the good of the group. We've come to expect them, and content without some of these tropes seems somehow incomplete to us. The problem isn't the trope. The problem is when the trope is used in a lazy or patronizing way. I'll discuss how not to do that in the next section. But if you're going to write fanfiction, you should be well versed in some of the tropes of this genre. Here are some I've been able to find. Enemies to Lovers Two polar opposites, who are heads of rival clans, families, companies, whatever, are forced together for a common cause and find that they have something in common. Soon they develop feelings and become star-crossed lovers. If that sounds Shakespearean, it is. That's basically the plot of Romeo and Juliet. Was Shakespeare a secret fanfic writer? Do you think the bard had Chaucer fanfic in his closet? Unexpected royalty. There's something satisfying about imagining our favorite hero as leader of a future army. A misunderstood character. It's all about character depth. Fans love finding a character they can hate only to discover a hidden depth of tenderness and humanity that entirely reframes the character. Professor Snape is a good example of this. Sharing a bed. Nothing pervy here. Just up the physical tension a bit by making your favorite lovers or pair of frenemies share a bed or some other necessary close quarters. Even an escape pod on a starship will do. Crazy plots and pairings. I once read a Star Trek fanfic about Dr. McCoy meeting an alien that communicated through... vigorous canoodling. It was an entire series, actually. There are some things you can't unsee. I have regrets. The crossover. There's something fun about taking two completely unrelated characters, throwing them together in a crucible, and seeing what happens. Temporary Amnesia It's a guilty pleasure, but there's something satisfying about watching people need to rediscover themselves after losing their memories in an unfortunate accident. The Coffee Shop Plot Still cheesed off that Hermione never got with Draco? That Harry never paired up with Cho? Or that Luke never... Ugh, gross. Never mind. Just take your favorite ignored pairings, put them in a coffee shop or some other suitably romantic setting, and let the sparks fly. Before we continue, don't forget to like, subscribe, and ding the bell so YouTube will notify you when I upload new videos. And don't forget to check the description of this video for book recommendations, as well as all the tools and resources I use in my writing and video production. Back to the video. Subverting Expectations now that you know the expectations, let's subvert the hell out of them. I like to use the Power Rangers for my example of subverting expectations because it's highly formulaic. The more formulaic a piece of content tends to be, the easier it will be for you to subvert that formula. Let's examine the formula for the average Power Rangers episode. The Rangers face some moral dilemma at the beginning of the show. The villain of the show sends their minions to attack, insert name of sleepy generic town here, the rangers defeat the villain's minions. The villain sends a monster to challenge the rangers. The monster usually exacerbates the dilemma facing the rangers at the start of the program. The rangers defeat the monster who grows to the size of a building because... Japan. The rangers transform into their zord phase and fight the monster. The rangers defeat the monster, which resolves their moral dilemma and achieves catharsis. So how can we subvert any of these points? Maybe, instead of the villain attacking, the rangers plan a preemptive strike against the villain's compound. Or the villain attacks a larger target, and the rangers need to team up with the military to take them out. What if the villain loses control of their monster, and teams up with the rangers to stop it? 
or the Zords break down and the Rangers need to take down a 50-foot monster on foot. Every story doesn't need to have a happy ending, does it? What if, instead of resolving the dilemma at the start of the story, the defeat of the monster fractures the team? This is done in the Season 3 finale of Camp Cretaceous, which I referenced in other articles and videos. Without too many spoilers, in order to stop the antagonist of Season 3, the kids hatch a plan to steal a laptop. They're successful, but the victory fractures the relationship between Darius and Kenji by the end of the episode. A thought on crossovers. Since crossovers are my jam, I thought I should give some extra advice I've found helpful. First, if you're having trouble creating conflict between your crossed characters, try introducing an original character to stir the pot a little bit. This is a little controversial and some fanfic authors will tell you different, but I don't have a problem with it and I've never had anyone criticize my work negatively for it. I would say that if you include original characters in your fix, just be intentional about it. They shouldn't be there as a way of inserting yourself or some Mary Sue into the plot. They should have a reason to exist in that universe. In the Eternal Crypt, that's what I did with the character of Vrenea. Her main job was to both lubricate interactions between Indy and the Doctor, and to act as a source of conflict between Indy and the Doctor. I think it led to some interesting moments between the two. Second, you can have as many characters in your crossover as you like, but try focusing on one primary character. In all the episodes of Doctor Who that I watched, the ones that resonated with me the most weren't the ones where the Doctor was the main character. The ones that I enjoyed the most were the ones that focused on the Doctor's companion. The Doctor acted as their enigmatic guide through the story. So, in the Eternal Crypt, I focused the story on Indy as the companion and the Doctor as his enigmatic guide. They were both the stars and they both have their moments, but Indy is the focus, even though it's essentially a Doctor Who story. Lastly, choose one primary world to be the setting. Just as you choose one character to be the focus, choose one primary world to be the set. If you're doing a Potter Star Wars crossover, either have Harry on Tatooine or Luke at Hogwarts. I would have the story set in the host character's world, but that's just my taste. There's also something to be said for setting the story in the secondary character's world. The best stories are about thrusting your characters into the unknown, after all. So let's wrap things up. In summary, the six hacks to level up your fanfiction are Remember that it's all about community Know your fandom Include easter eggs Know the tropes Learn to subvert expectations And consider doing crossovers And that's it. Like I said at the start, most of the same rules that go into making good original prose also go into making good fanfiction. I intentionally didn't cover those here. You can find more on the craft of writing from my other videos and articles and from my website and resources I recommend below. I think the advice I gave above should help you in your fanfic. In my next video, I'm going to go over some of the worst tropes and choices you can make in your fanfiction. I'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Good writing and Calamus Gladio Fortior.